Well, people, I friggin' did it again. Yep. You guys remember last year around this time, I bought a MacBook Air for like a hundred bucks off Kijiji that was fucked, and I basically got it fixed. I put a new logic board into it and a new keyboard. It cost me, oh, not a new logic board, sorry, a new keyboard, and no, they ended up putting a new logic board, that's right. So a new keyboard and a new logic board into it, and it cost me like 238 bucks. So I was $338 into the machine. And then I turned around and sold it for 600 bucks. Well, yeah, this happened. So I bought this here MacBook off of uh, the internet there off Kijiji. Paid $160 for it. This is what it's doing. Now it came to me with no hard drive, four gigs of RAM. It's the Intel Core i7 2.2 gigahertz quad core and it's not recognizing that there's a hard drive in it i already put a hard drive into it it's got a solid state drive one of the other mushkins i had laying around so it's 120 gig solid state drive and it is not detecting it now something you can do which is a pain in the ass to do when you're holding the camcorder is you can shut her down and then by pressing and holding command uh command R on the keyboard, okay, and then you press the power button to turn it on. It plays the chime, and then it should come into uh, friggin' system recovery mode. Give it a second. So now it wants to do the internet recovery. So it's going to ask me for my Wi Fi information and all that nonsense in a second. There it is. So I'm just going to punch that in real quick. Okay, it's all punched in. We'll hit OK. Let it do its nonsense. And now it starts the internet recovery process. Now normally this takes a long time, but I got super fast internet, so it only takes about four minutes to uh, download this part. But then when it's done downloading this part, it gets all fucky. And it does weird shit. And I question if the logic board on this one here is fried too. Now, some people were saying boot into single user mode and disable the Radeon card because it could be causing the problem. Apparently the Radeon cards on these computers are fucking junk. Now, this here rig here has the has two video cards. It has the Intel 3000 with 384 megs of RAM and the Radeon uh, 6750, which has a half a gig of RAM. Now, the problem is, is if it is the video card, that would explain why she's buckling but they're like press and hold like command or option and s and it'll put it into single user mode well that's not working for me and with single user mode you can basically boot in blow away the video card you can tell it not to use the radeon video card and some people have had success with that now i however am not having success i picked this up yesterday and i've been dicking around with it all night trying to figure it out now some people said the firmware could have a password on it uh, other people said it could be the logic board. One person said that the flashing folder on it that you seen earlier was uh, could be the ribbon cable itself. I inspected the ribbon cable. It seems to be all intact from like the part on the logic board to where it connects up. So I don't really know what the hell's going on. Now this here is supposed to be a light bulb saying that the hard drive is being accessed, but I question is if because the hard drive in this thing is an SSD that I had formatted for Windows. If it's just pissed off because it's MBR and not that GPT or whatever format that Apple likes. But regardless, like my old white book, when I replaced the hard drive in it, I pulled the old, it had a 40 gig in it, and I put a 120 gig in it, and it popped up with the recovery disks. Now, I don't know where my disks are. I got some disks for Tiger somewhere around here. I just don't know where the hell they are. I got to find them because I'm going to try and boot off of those, and maybe I'll be able to get a recovery system of some fashion. But, like, I would think if the logic board was shot, it wouldn't get this far. Like, if the motherboard didn't work, it wouldn't even attempt internet recovery. It wouldn't boot, right? Because that's how PCs are. If your motherboard's fucked, the, the, the computer won't work. End of story. You just won't fire up. It won't, it'll just quit. So, I don't know. I really don't know. So, we're just going to wait and see. I'll show you here what it does once it's done this nonsense. It's pretty annoying. But, um... Come on, you slow-ass friggin'. I couldn't imagine doing this over a cable connection. So glad I got 50 megs down. I was watching a video of a guy doing this online, and he had 45 minutes remaining for the download. I was like, holy shit, man. I'd lose my balls. But here we go. It brings up the Apple, and then you'll get the spinning wheel of doom in a second. There it is, the spinning wheel of doom. And then she'll black screen on you any second now. And then it brings up white screen, and it'll sit here for a long time. And because my camera's trying to focus on the flashlight dot rather than anything else, it's totally Sonying right now. 
and give it something to focus on. But it'll sit here for a while and just do nothing. Like literally do nothing. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Why are Apple computers so dick compared to PCs? Why can't they just make them right? And to all the people who are like, Oh, Apple computers are the best. They never give you problems. Well, you got lucky, because fuck, man. Apple computers are always giving me problems, and they're so fucking hard to troubleshoot because they never generate error reports. Like, why can't we have a computer that generates a damn error report? You got a problem, blue screen it. Fire up a fucking blue screen or black screen with writing on it that says, Hey, buddy, your shit's busted. Here's the problem we're having starting up. A white screen or a gray screen doesn't tell me dick about what's going on on this computer. It just tells me that it doesn't want to boot and makes me want to bring it to the Apple store, which we don't have in this town, to get a trouble shot. You know, I could bring it to Future Shop, but they would just charge me an arm and a leg and then, you know, uh, that's going to be $200. Oh, and by the way, you also need a new logic board. We didn't even change that part yet. So $200 for looking at it. It's like fucking arseholes. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Probably going to talk to Cat Piss and see if I can talk to his brother and see if I can get this rig in to him. And if it is the logic board, maybe you can stove another one into it because I wouldn't mind using it. I wouldn't mind learning uh, the new Final Cut and all that. That'd be all right. I didn't want to pay full price for a Macintosh because have you seen the prices on them? And like I've said on multiple vlogs before, Apple completely fucked over this here refresh of the MacBooks and the... Um, the iMacs and the Mac Minis by soldering RAM into them like what were they thinking obviously they weren't because if they were they wouldn't have done that but uh, actually I know what they're thinking they're thinking if we can charge these arseholes an extra two hundred dollars on a MacBook to go from four gigs of RAM to eight gigs let's rape them for all the cash they got right and that's what they do that's why like a Mac Mini right now is 549 but you get a 1.4 gigahertz i5 dual core ultra low voltage and 4 gigs of RAM. You want to bring that son of a bitch up to 8 gigs of RAM, now it's 749 you know? I don't know, it's kind of ridiculous, their pricing points on memory and stuff, where you can go to like the new egg and get 8 gigs of RAM for $70. And what I don't get is Apple literally screws over their customers like this, and yet they still have this large fucking fan base. You know, it's ridiculous. And these same people will bitch and moan about paying four dollars and twenty cents a month to go watch videos on a network just saying now one of the articles i read about these things says that the uh, the uh, firmware gets password locked and that causes things like pressing and holding c when starting up for it not to show a selectable boot drive and other things and it'll try and boot off the original hard drive which this thing didn't come with because the drive was shot and you took it out and you just never got around to replacing it and then he ended up buying a new macbook and just never use this one um, so I don't want to think it's the logic board and I know for a fact that if I bring it to an Apple store they're gonna be like oh yeah but it's the logic board totally the logic board gotta replace the logic board because logically replacing the logic board would reset the firmware password because the board wouldn't have one and it would resolve a lot of problems what I need to do is get the friggin firmware password off here what I really need is my damn friggin OS install CDs now I loaned them to Bruce back in the day, I know he gave them back to me and I have no idea where the frig I put them. And I think they might be at work in my desk, I probably never brought them home. But I really need to find them, so I'm probably going to bring this rig with me to work. Oh fuck, tonight we got training. Son of a bitch. Training for a job I'm not even keeping. Ridiculous. But um, I'm going to bring this bitch with me to work and uh, slap a CD in the side and see if she'll take it. See if I can get this cocksucker to start. If not, I'm probably just going to talk to Cat Piss and see about getting his brother's email address and contacting him and then going from there because, uh, fuck's sakes, this is ridiculous. I want to get it up and running. Like, I was thinking about flipping this computer once I fixed it like I did with the Mac Air, but this is actually like a quad-core i7, now with 8 gigs of RAM because I threw 8 gigs into it to try and reset the firmware because one of the tricks you can do if the firmware is locked is you change the RAM configuration in the rig and then when you boot it up you do that whole uh, command option RP or PR or whatever and you turn the power on and it resets the power management system in it and then uh, you can it basically resets the firmware for one boot where you can boot up but with the hard drive wherever the hell that is in the computer I think it's over here actually either over here or over here probably I don't know where it is Frig. It's getting warm though, like really warm. Ooh, I could heat my coffee right there. Nice. But um, yeah, like I tried that 
and it booted into internet recovery mode and did exactly what it already did. So I honestly don't know. I might talk to Capus about getting his brother's information and just saying fuck it and sending it off to him. And then tossing a new logic board into it. And a new logic board for this rig's 300 bucks. So I'd be $460 into it. $460 for a computer that I could flip for an easy 1300 Because people would pay that for this thing and I don't know why. But I would probably keep it, learn Final Cut, and maybe edit my vlogs on it. I don't know. We'll see. It's a nice rig. Like, they did a good job building them. It's just, they make them so damn small that the friggin' things can't breathe. And when you stress them out, they blow up. I just don't understand how come people can't take care of their technology. It doesn't make sense. Like the white book lasted me from 2006 to 2013, and the reason why it broke was because of my fault. Like I'm, I fucked up. You know, stuck a Chinese battery in the son of a bitch, and the battery decided to balloon and flex the case and pop the board. That was my fault. I was stupid. I apologize. That's another thing I laugh about Apple is you need a battery in your rig because there's not enough power coming across the friggin' power supply to power it alone. In certain situations uh, like for instance if you're just surfing the internet and stuff you're fine what it'll do when it's running on battery is it'll half clock the freaking processor because the battery just can't supply enough juice when it's plugged in it'll full clock the processor and when you're doing something intense like rendering a video or I don't know what else like photoshopping probably anything that needs a lot of power uh, it'll draw from the 85 watt mag safe as well as the battery same time to give it the extra power it needs to get the job done. That's something that Apple did. Now I remember that on my old white book when I ran it off of battery uh, the 1.83 gigahertz processor would run at 1 gigahertz. It would just declock itself and slow itself right down and you kn it was a noticeable drop too like on battery it ran like a bag of shit and the screen would only it wouldn't go full brightness it would its full brightness on battery was like half brightness plugged in so that was kind of weird, but that's the way Apple works it. Basically to try and keep the power consumption down while keeping the computer running. Where like a Windows PC, the batteries are more than capable of running that system. But then again, you know, Apple claims seven hours runtime on this thing off a battery. Where with a laptop PC, you get what? Maybe an hour and a half, two hours if you're lucky on a four cell. Six cell, you might be able to pull three and a half hours, four hours because it's just drawn from that battery non-stop and really doesn't care so yeah I'm probably gonna bring this beast with me to work I wish I could find that old case I had or that old laptop bag I had because after that wasteful training tonight which we're probably not gonna learn much at um, I'm going to uh, do some troubleshooting on it because I don't expect it to be too busy tonight but you never know you never know I just wish I knew where I had that travel case when I bought that uh, old Acer off of, uh, oh, sorry, when I got that old Acer off of that girl there because that would be nice. Yes, I'm behind the green screen right now. Creepy, ain't it? I put stuff back here. Um, that's an old backpack, cameras, luggage, monitors, power supply for a fucking netbook. Uh, I don't know where the hell I put that. Okay, I gotta find that next and then uh, button up this MacBook because I got all the screws out of it and go from there and go from, actually I'm probably not even going to button her up, fuck it. I'm not even going to button her up. I'm just going to bring it in, figure it out and if that doesn't work, I'm going to contact uh, Cat Piss and be like, dude, need your bro's contact information because I got to give him money to fix another goddamn MacBook. Son of a dick. And as you can see inside of it, it looks pretty good. It's not dirty or anything. It's pretty clean. So I really don't know what is going on with this fucking train wreck. So yeah, like I could take off the logic board, but I don't have a screw. Oh, I do have a screwdriver that'll fit that. Never mind. Got the one from when we did the iPhone. Well, when I bought the iPhone kit, but I just threw this eight gigs of RAM in. Like the battery is really fucking warm right now. I don't know if that's a bad sign. Probably. Well, it's not too bad. I can put my hand on it. It's. You can tell it was drained. So, I don't know, I'll bring it to work, we'll fuck around with it tonight, and I'll stab a couple CDs into it and see what happens, and see if I can get her to boot from CD maybe, I don't know, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Worst case in Ontario, I'll send it off to an Apple shop and have it fixed, but I might take my SSD out. Oh, it's not the friggin' Mushkin, it's the Kingston I bought. This one's slow compared to the Mushkins. Not as fast, but I think I paid like $65 for it, 
and it came with all the kit to mount it in your hard in your into your computer, like into your PC, or you could have you know stick it in a laptop. Like it came with the rails to make it a three and a half inch, and it came with a spare SATA cable and a power cable, all that nonsense. Well, a power cable converter to go from Molex to uh, SATA power. So that's all right, but. Yeah, apples are weird, man. They're a bitch to troubleshoot, and that's why I friggin' hate them. When they work, they're great. When they don't, they're shit. Somebody's at my fucking door. Alrighty, people. Well, it's off to work we go now, freak sakes. Gotta go do that stupid training for a job I'm probably not gonna have in the next couple months. Love that kind. Oh, I didn't grab a bottle of juice. Okay, better go upstairs and grab that. Just gonna sit my MacBook up here. Go grab that juice, and then we'll... We'll bounce off to work. I think I've had to put a new coil into this thing. My old coil was shot, but new coil's teach not too bad. Not too bad. Once it breaks in, it'll be better. Scampers no likes my juice. Scampers no likes the flavors of my juice. They say it's because cats can't smell sweetness, right? They can only smell like meat and other meat-related items. She's just sitting there, fucking getting lazier and lazier as days go by. Love that kind, kitty. <laughs> yeah, let's saddle up and jump in the six. Head off to work, learn about a ticketing system that we're not going to be using. Fucking pointless. Fucking pointless. Unless we're going to start using it in the near future, then it's not pointless, but I really don't like the fact that i got to learn how to do a job I'm losing. That's kind of stupid. So if anybody's wondering what that creaking and crawling is in my front end, that's actually those Chinese struts. You know, I had the car looked over there by a buddy. And he's like, your ball joints are fine. He goes, I don't know what the hell. He goes, your struts are fucked though. And I'm like, really? And he goes, oh God. He goes, check this out. And he did the whole pushing on the front of the car and bouncing it and like the, sh the, the struts, like the shock part, not the spring. The shock part is just China, you know? It's just China. So he's like, you need new struts. He goes, when were these struts last replaced? And I was like, well, fuck last, like last year twice. He's like, where'd you buy them? I'm like, CarQuest. And he's like, well, they're not Moog. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I know. He goes, they're not even a name brand. He goes, what the hell brand are these? I'm like, China. And he's like, there's your problem. He goes, you need better struts. You got to get better struts for your car. He goes, you know, that's like a real important part. And he starts giving me this lecture about uh, suspension and how your car uses less power when it can actually just keep on the road. And when it's bouncing around, a lot of that power is distributed through other parts of the system and cause extra stress that doesn't need to be done and goes on and on and on about it. And I'm like, oh, hey, bud, you don't need to lecture up right now. Like, I understand fucking dicks at CarQuest told me they're a Moog and then I get them and they're not Moog. They're straight out of China. And then apparently you can't even, you can buy like uh, Ebok, I think is the brand, Ebok. E-I-B-A-C-H probably said that wrong probably Eibach for all I know but uh, crappy tire sells Eibach and they sell this other brand which is pretty weird looking it's um, Formula One I think it is a race formula race struts or something it's their in-house brand but they have the serviceable greasable nipples on them for the bearings and all that shit or these ones here don't they're a pre-greased sealed unit like factory OEM but you know, a factory OEM, I would probably put them back in if GM didn't charge an arm and a leg and a firstborn for them. Fuck sakes, they want like 289 a strut, or well, a quick strut. And the reason why I like quick struts is now that I know how to replace them, you know, once I get my jack situation all situated, I, I watched my buddy Chuck do it. It was like, all he did was removed the tire, removed the, uh, the caliper because it was in the way. Pretty sure you left the rotor on, but I could be wrong on that. I have to open the window. It's fucking hot in the cabin right now. Oh, thanks for signaling like last minute, bud. Goof. But, um, yeah, like, and then it was, what, three or four bolts down below and three up top, and the strut just flopped out. So that's pretty easy peasy. And to put the new one in, he didn't really do anything. He just reversed the process, put the caliper back on, tightened her on, and fuck, she was golden didn't look too difficult at all and he checked out all the ball joints and stuff too at the time because he was already down there and he said everything's fine your links are fine and all that now it also could be that when I hit a bump and that noise you're hearing 
it could be the links again because we all know they like the brake on these cars after you install them like right away because they use some sort of a, a rubberized grommet probably a polyurethane could just be generic rubber and well nor last time I checked salty roads and rubber makes rubber dry out and become very brittle and fall apart links don't fall off when the get when the uh, the grommet or not the grommet what the hell is the word I'm looking for here I can't even think of it I want to say insulator but it's not an insulator because it's not really insulating it against it's more like a, a friction pad type thing basically to keep shit all on there and tight gasket even maybe I don't know it's not really a gasket because it's not really blocking any airflow or fluid flow I can't think of the word but um, you know when they wear it down and break off all that happens is now the whole freaking link can bounce around in the chamber because it's got nothing to, to like stop it nothing to fill the space yeah there we go we'll call it a freaking rubber spacer so that makes a lot of sense um, you know, he said the bolt's on there tight. He goes, you won't lose it. He goes, it'll just drive you nuts from here in the front end, rattle like a friggin' baby rattler. And you'll, you'll want to get them changed out, he goes, but I doubt any harm will happen. And I know what the links are. They're not tie rod links. They're just, well, kind of, sort of. It's basically like the sway bar links. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. It goes from, like, I guess the steering suspension down to the sway bar, and it keeps everything tight, tight. And when these uh, rubber seals break, it's still tight tight, but the seal can bounce up and down and wiggle around in the hole. Wish I could think the proper term up, and I know you guys already typed it into the fucking comments. I already know that. Do you guys know what it is? Because a lot of you guys are mechanics, because you came from here from Dave's Farm. Well, a lot of you guys were Dave's Farmers, and you came onto my channel from when I was on there. And the only reason why you're on Dave's Farm is because you're into automotive, and Dave's Farm was leading the way in the automotive view industry before he got stupid made dumb videos and fucking got himself kicked off the internet you know what I'm saying so yeah but I know a lot of you guys came from there for the reason of automotive mechanics and Dave did have some pretty good ideas for how to fix cars and shit and he was kind of smart in that area but his own freaking mental illnesses got the best of him and he made some stupid videos and he got fucking booted off the internet and that's what happens when you get stupid well, you can't be stupid. Being famous on YouTube does not mean you're invincible. Doesn't mean you're unstoppable. It just means you got a lot of people watching your shit and a lot of potential people to rat you out when you do something stupid. Try to tell people that. Like, don't be making fucking dumb videos where you're doing illegal as fuck shit. Because uh, I know the cops are watching. Like this one time, right? We're down at Blokes. And this guy's fucking harassing us big time. Like, calling Bloke's cell phone. How he got the number, I don't know. But he's calling Bloke's cell phone. And I was there, and he knew I was there because that's when I vlogged every day. And I told people that I was going down. So don't expect a vlog for the next couple days because I wouldn't be able to edit down there. And uh, this guy calls down there. And he sits there and he starts saying, like, I'm at your house right now and I'm raping your girlfriend, Adam. How do you feel about that? And there's a girl in the background totally screaming. So right away I grabbed my phone, I text home, and I'm like, hey, you alone right now? And my, my girlfriend at the time was like, yeah, why? And I'm like, well, okay, just, just making sure. I'm like, everything's cool, no, no problems? She's like, no, everything's cool. She goes, I'm bored, but everything's cool. And I said, okay, I'm just, just making sure. I didn't want to tell her what was going on, because that would have made her fucking flip tits. She already hated that I did YouTube anyway. So we ended up going to the cop shop and talking to the police about it because uh, we wanted to get a friggin' We called Rogers. Rogers wouldn't do dick. They said we need a police warrant in order for them to give the information out. We go to the cop shop. The cops wouldn't do dick because they said we have to deal with the cell phone company. So basically we're getting the runaround, right? So this guy here, his anonymity was working for him, but that's fine. We already know who he is and he'll be taken care of soon. But anyway, um... But as we were leaving, like this was before I had the Vlogging Life shirts, way before I had the Vlogging Life shirts. So we're leaving there and we're going to um, back, as we're leaving the cop goes, oh, and by the way, Adam, like he knew my name, I never gave my name, he goes, keep on vlogging. And I just fucking like, I'm like, thanks man. Didn't even think, well I thought about it, but I just didn't react. We got out of the cop shop, we got into Bloke's old Ford. And that's when I said to Bloke, I'm like, dude, he's like, what? I'm like, why are the cops watching my videos? And he goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, he knew my name and he told me to keep on vlogging. And right then, that's when Bloke fucking like, 
his face went almost white. And he was like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, why are they watching my shit? And he's like, I, I don't know, I don't know. And I said, well, this makes me nervous. All I can think of is the cops basically tagged anybody who was at the farm, maybe anybody who was at Pugs, because I was at Pugs. And back then, well, probably still now, the cops really don't like Pug One, right? Well, at least the cops in Tilsonburg don't. Not Tilsonburg, fuck. The cops in uh, St. Thomas, that's better. So I'm thinking maybe due to that, that's how they found me. I can't park here, that's customer parking. It's a nice fucking uh, escape. But um, yeah, so, you know, sure enough, cops were watching my shit and I have no idea why. And he knew my friggin' end, end line of keep on vlogging and used it against me to let me know like you know basically to let me know that they're watching my shit and it's like okay you're watching my shit but some asshole is claiming that he's at my house raping my girlfriend and you guys don't want to do fuck all about it saying i got to take it up with the phone company he says i got to take it up with the cops so what's really going on freak sakes so that's one of the reasons why people quit youtube is because other people get so fucking jealous that they have to find ways to harass you and cause problems in your life knowing that they won't get touched and won't get taken out by the cops they can totally be cunts all they want and it works for them but this is why i say be careful what you post on youtube because you know like right now there's a lot of shit going on in the world so you start posting stuff like making bombs and making explosives that are pretty damn good with all that terrorist nonsense going on with ISIS or ISIS or whatever the fuck they're calling themselves these days. You start posting nonsense like that, cops pick that up, can classify you as a fucking terrorist threat, especially if you have a huge beard, they might just go all racial on you and think you're friggin' Islamic. Next thing you know, you got like the fuzz of the law banging down your door with a battering ram armed with friggin' AK-47s fucking taking you into the back of their truck and you're being prosecuted for a crime you never did just because you wanted to show how you made a bomb out of some friggin' tinfoil and toilet tr uh, toilet cleaner, you know what I'm saying? So be careful what you put on the fucking internet, people, because you don't know who's watching and you don't know who's gonna take you down. Just saying. That's why I try to keep my shit pretty damn, pretty damn clean there, pretty damn safe, because fuck sakes, I don't need cops showing up in my house again. That's nonsense. But anyway, people, there you go. There's my vlog for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll keep you updated on the MacBook and let you know how that's going. I'm going to fix it regardless, like even if it needs a new logic board, I'll fucking jam one into her. But I'll keep you uh, informed on that progress and we'll go from there. I'd like to have it up and running so I can edit the vlogs on this camera on it because I really want to learn Final Cut. And I have a copy of it at home for the old white book. That was a big waste of money. Fuck, I bought it for the white book. Literally used it once. It ran like a bag of shit because the old white book was a Core 2 Duo 1.83 gigahertz. And the most RAM you could put into it was four gigs because it was a 32-bit processor. So it only used like three and a quarter. <clears throat> but um, in the end, it ran Final Cut so garbage-like. Like, it, I ended up going back to iMovie because iMovie didn't wreck the system as much. But I like the way Final Cut works because it renders while you're editing. Sounds weird, right? Like, it's actually working in the background and finalizing the project while you're working on it. But if you go back and you start fucking with a setting in the beginning, it'll delete that finalization and start finalizing it again once you're done. I don't know, I just, I like that that concept and there's nothing out for PC that does that yet. Final Cut's the only one I could think of. If anybody else out there knows of a video program that works like Final Cut for PC, fuck, leave a comment down below and let me know. I'd like to check it out. But Final Cut's the only one I know that renders while you're editing. I thought that was cool. Like uh, Catpiss showed me there on his, because he actually has a Mac, uh, iMac that doesn't suck. He has one with like the i7 into it and all that. And he was editing up uh, an RC video, I think it was a flying video. And as he's working over here, back here, there's a bar going across the top. And I'm like, what's that bar doing? And he goes, oh, it's rendering. I'm like, what do you mean it's rendering? He goes, oh, it's rendering the project already of stuff I previously edited. So that finalization doesn't take long. And then when he was done, he hit finalize and it farted out a 10 minute video in two minutes because it only had two minutes left to finalize. Like, that's amazing. That's technology, I like that. Apple has some good shit, but they do have a lot of bunky shit that doesn't make sense. But anyway, people, thanks for watching my video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, click like. Any questions, comments, concerns, throw them down below. I will be doing more commenting on comments once I get that gateway computer off my desk and clean it off and get a laptop up there again. Kind of, kind of fucked over on that for right now, but uh, it is what it is. Thanks for watching, like, favorite, comment, and until next time, people, Keep on blogging.